I wanted to make this video before the YouTube creators take the video down or at least retroactively change it on the back of viewer feedback. I don't make a lot of reaction videos, but this one really got to me. It got my spidey senses tingling and my mind was boggled watching it. The video titled, We Need to Rethink Exercise, The Workout Paradox, is by YouTube in Titan named, and this isn't easy to say, Kurz exact. Kirk Zizigek in a nutshell. Kurz exact is a German word literally meaning in a nutshell. And the channel has a whopping 23 million subscribers. For the benefit of the video, I'm going to say this name a few times just to make sure that I can edit a correct one. Kurz exact. Kurz exact. Kurz exact. Kurz exact. It's definitely not an easy word to say. It's a huge channel and for full transparency I've been a subscriber of them for a while now. I've enjoyed quite a few of their videos. They make cartoony infotainment videos about science experiments. They're fun to watch. Can you trust Kurt Gesagt videos? In reality, exercising is a bad way to burn fat. Not anymore. Now that's all changed. Having now watched their workout paradox video, almost immediately another YouTube in Titan making his own reaction video to this same video appeared on my recommendation list on YouTube. His name is Coach Greg. You may have heard of him. <laughs> Coach Greg, in today's video, we got this channel, 22 million followers, and all they're doing is trying to convince people that you shouldn't really exercise. It's called In A Nutshell. Uh, as he's currently got 2.1 million subscribers, so a formidable channel on YouTube. I watched his Zwifting videos, that's how I found him. He's a heavy rider winning Zwift races, and that inspired me. I cannot describe how much I needed to hear this. As if you can't lose weight by exercising more. Exercise doesn't make you lose weight, but is essential to your cancels gym membership. And so if you watch this video, the vibe you're gonna get is, what is the point of exercising? He absolutely laid into this video in his usual style. And to be fair, I found myself almost completely agreeing with everything Coach Greg said. Looking at Kirk Exact's Wikipedia page, the channel was started by one man in Germany who believed making entertaining videos about complicated subjects, and I can respect that. It's no longer a one-man band. This is relevant as it removes any excuses for the errors in judgment or time constraints on this video. The reason for this context is to highlight that this channel has a huge audience and because of this their videos hold significant weight. And what was it that the great philosopher Uncle Ben once said? With great power comes great responsibility. So when they make a video that's complete it can't go without challenge. Losing weight is hard, and unfortunately, your body is sabotaging you every step of the way. So I'm bringing the weight of my huge channel down to bear on them. David holding Goliath to account. I'm going to stop saying Kurg exact before I summon the girl from the ring with my pronunciation. I'll just call them in a nutshell from now on, and I'll save you the aggro. The Workout Paradox video was uploaded on the 16th of July this year, and based on the comment section on the video, it really didn't go to plan. Now, I'll get into that in a short while as of making this video it's still live on youtube so you can go and watch it you can get your own take on it but watch my video first so i can bias the hell out of you i can now race for an hour do an hour of cardio and the next day i can do it again when i first started an hour bike wow that was a hard workout. My muscles are sore. Now, I may not be an elite cyclist or runner, but what I am is 100% natty in my views about fitness and weight loss. I had to Google what natty actually meant. I originally thought it was an American term for nutty or crazy, as it's a word Coach Greg uses to describe others in his videos and thumbnails. Your body is a biological machine that follows the laws of thermodynamics and needs energy and raw materials to stay alive, which is why you eat. The energy from food is measured in calories and you need a certain amount to power your internal machines. The first thing that gets my goat up is the visuals they're choosing to use to support their message. Burgers. The food apparently we all eat when we're working out and pumping weights. Of course, you're never going to lose any weight if you're munching down on a burger during a workout and then backing that up with six more burgers afterwards. Forget about the gym, you'll soon need a good cardiovascular consultant and a booper healthcare plan if that's your level of willpower and endurance. And all it's going to do is convince more people not to bother exercising and so of course I'm going to react to it. Millions of people are going to be brainwashed into thinking 
what's the point of exercising? We all know that if you eat crap food, then you probably put on weight or at the very least feel unhealthy. But considering this video is titled, we need to rethink exercise, then there is an already pre-assumed feeling from the viewer that this video is going to say that working out and exercising is wrong, or at least the way we're doing it is wrong. Initially, I thought the thumbnail and title was classic YouTube clickbait, something I'd never do. And then I would end up watching a friendly, inoffensive cartoon about how beneficial hitting the gym or going for a fun run can be to my overall health and well-being. Boy, was I wrong. The only thing they didn't do was create a clickbait thumbnail. In reality, exercising is a bad way to burn fat. This was their message. Exercise is a waste of your time. An hour of walking burns about 260 calories. Moderate swimming, 430. Biking, 600. Running, 700. And so first things first, just because you're sitting on a bike and pedaling doesn't mean you're burning 600 calories. Coach Greg is 100% right with his point here, and I have physical evidence for this. Fairly recently, I completed a 10K run with my missus, Tracy. She's 4 foot 11, and I'm 6 foot 2. She weighs 52 kg, and I did it weighing 95 kgs at the time. She is almost half my body weight. How do you feel? The course was exactly the same length for both of us, 10K. It took us one hour and 12 minutes to run it at Tracy's pace. So as close as I'm ever gonna get to it being a controlled experiment. I'm a runner, Tracy isn't. Tracy burnt 538 calories and I burnt 984 calories on that same 10K run. We both ran it at the exact same pace, starting and stopping at the exact same time. For the average, person watching this video, and I've already proved that there is no such thing as average when it comes to fitness, they will not be able to run or cycle consistently hard enough for long enough to be able to reach six or 700 calories. And if they do manage to run non-stop, then the distance will have to be different depending on how many different aspects, mainly their weight at the time. If I run 5K now, and let's say I burn 300 calories doing it, then tomorrow, if I run the same 5K distance again, but this time wearing a 45 pound backpack, then the amount of calories I burn tomorrow versus today will be significantly higher. This animation and simplification of points in this video is nowhere near accurate and is very, very misleading to the average viewer. But remember, this isn't a Mr. Beast video where accuracy and knowledge is not the driving force. It's like 100 cannonballs, massive explosives, and so much more. They go to great lengths to ensure we know, as their audience, that their videos are 100% based in fact. Once we have the first readable version, we reach out to experts or scientists and ask them to fact check and correct us. It's the trust me I'm a doctor vibe while simultaneously pulling down your trousers. Almost no one unless you're a cardio addict is burning 600 calories on a bike. And Greg is right I am a cardio addict and on my last three Zwift bike rides this week in race one I burnt 930 calories that was an hour and a half of max effort zone five racing. Race two I burnt 482 calories calories and then in race three I burnt 509 calories racing 24k for 40 minutes and I averaged 200 watts so I would consider myself above average when it comes to my fitness levels all three races I mentioned which were raced this week were max effort heart pounding lie on the floor so I don't pass out bike rides so not zone one chilled out workouts as described in this video the average person out enjoying a bike ride to get fit is not averaging 200 watts and if they are they're not doing it for long and they're definitely not burning 600 calories doing it. If you eat more calories than you burn, your body stores them mostly in the form of fat. This part is right, but again, why is an obviously overweight man eating a burger off the floor? What is this imagery? Fat people eat like dogs? What? is this video trying to tell us. To lose weight, you have to burn more than you eat, so fat is turned back into energy. It's because it is. If you're in a calorie deficit, you're gonna lose weight. And if you're in a calorie surplus, you're going to gain weight. The math, the logic, it is very simple. Now this video has the same vibe as a flat earther trying to use their facts to prove their beliefs. It sounds impressive, but when you scratch the surface, it's all complete nonsense, hidden in amongst some truths, pushing a weird agenda packaged up as a trustworthy, entertaining, scientific 
video. As I've already said, this video annoyed me and others like me, as well as Coach Greg, because we know from lived experiences that the concept of fitness and exercise being a waste of time for weight loss is quite simply not true. And so what he said right here is that working out, exercising, burning off a bunch of calories, it doesn't work out. It's pointless, useless. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't result in actually losing weight. I'm telling you that it does. This is where the video should have ended. Calorie deficit equals weight loss and vice versa. Putting food in your mouth as fuel versus the energy you burn equals weight loss through your body burning your reserves if you're in a deficit or then storing the excess calories as body fat if it's in excess. It's that simple. End of video. There are two ways to do this eating less, which we'll cover in another video, and burning more, say by moving around aimlessly, also called working out. Jesus, we're barely over one minute into this video. Moving around aimlessly, also called working out. Moving around aimlessly, also called working out. The language they're using is laughably cynical. We also get told early on that exercising is healthy somehow, so working out should kill two birds with one stone. Now this statement sounded like my friends and family when I first told them I wanted to lose weight and run a marathon. Spoken by someone who hasn't run or cycled anywhere. I can't do it, I don't want to try it, so to make myself feel better about my lack of fitness and physical well-being, I'm going to project my insecurities onto others who are trying to better themselves. It's one of these frustrating experiences where you do what you think's right, only to not see the results you deserve. You're not doing it right. If you do more cardio and you go to the gym with those calorie estimators that are going to be off and you're hanging on for dear life and it says you burn a thousand calories in the stepper and then you get out and you go eat fast food, you eat a burger and fries, eat 1500 calories. Of course, you're not going to lose weight. Now, Coach Greg is not wrong. If you're not seeing the results and it's because it's not at a high enough intensity level or it's not for a long enough period of time or you're not being as consistent as you should be or you then ruin it by eating more calories than you burnt. It's that simple. In reality, exercising is a bad way to burn fat. Exercising is a bad way to burn fat. Bad. As in, not good, negative. Last I checked, bad has negative connotations. Using language like bad in this video to describe exercising makes the video feel like propaganda rather than for education. Exercising poorly can be ineffective. It can be difficult or even an uphill struggle, but it's never bad. It's never bad if you're up, out and moving. Even if you're not burning 600 calories an hour, you're moving, you're getting used to it mentally and physically, and most importantly, you're learning. You're learning what works and what doesn't. How can that ever be bad for you? Smoking is bad for you. Gambling is bad for you. Running and cycling is not bad for you. The myth of the workout. Now, language like this mixed in with the imagery I've already described, then added with their statement. I'll come on to their statement in a second. It's a good one. Then combined with their decision to leave the video live to influence anyone inexperienced enough to believe it shows very poor judgment by the channel, especially by a channel this of their size and calibre. I've already said this. Language is important. Starting a section of the video with the myth of the workout automatically makes that statement 100% true in the eyes of the audience. That working out for weight loss is a myth so all they need to do now in the video is explain why this truth exists. A few years ago scientists began to compare populations in industrialized societies which sit a lot to hunter-gatherer communities who move around a lot. The Hadza people in Tanzania walk an average of nine kilometers a day to find wild plants and hunt animals. They can move more in a single day than an office worker in a week. I'm not going to play this whole section where in a nutshell compares office workers to hunter-gatherers in Tanzania, mainly because it feels completely made up or at the very least a huge generalization. But am I the only one that feels this is a very very strange comparison. The Hadza people in Tanzania walk an average of nine kilometers a day. So of course they burn more calories, right? But it turns out that the Hadza burn the same amount of calories per day as a typical person in an industrialized country around 1900 for women and around 2600 for men. Did you notice that they failed to mention that those people in those tribes are not morbidly obese? The hunter gatherers, they're in shape. 
They're fit. They're walking all the time. Now, it's obvious that the hunter-gatherers are naturally trained for the physical output they're expending, meaning their bodies and muscles have been conditioned, probably since birth, to be able to run or walk these larger distances without huge effort. If the office workers, assuming they're not Greek gods, attempted to run or even walk the same distances, then they'd collapse within the first few kilometres. So this is hardly a sensible comparison. Now, Greg talks at length here about how can the video creators know what the hunter-gatherer tribes men and women consume and burn. When's the last time you saw a hunter-gatherer tribe with people who are rubbing their belly saying, oh, I love my big belly? I had another thought at this point. Eliud Kipchoge, quite possibly one of the best marathon runners we have ever seen, will burn between 2,300 and 2,500 calories during a marathon run. I burnt 4,300 calories two weeks ago trying to complete a trail marathon that nearly killed me. I'm being a bit dramatic, but you get my point here. I might burn 2,300 calories on a rest day just walking around shopping, driving my car to and from the office. The same as Kipchoge running a marathon. But is this a comparable example? Oh, got his shoulder. One, oh, oh, oh. One, this intentionally dramatic example is just as fanciful as this video's example. Kipchoge's body has adapted through efficient training to be able to achieve the speeds and times he does efficiently. That's what the important thing here is, efficiency. Meaning he doesn't need to burn as many reserves as I do, for example. Which is why I have to work so much harder to achieve the same distance. I just wish I could achieve the same times though. <laughs> I'm probably closer in size and stature to the average office worker than I am to Kipchoge. Now it is true that we all burn calories just being alive. We burn calories while sleeping. But the average person, office worker in this case, walks on average about 5,000 steps. That's nothing, nowhere near enough to burn the same as the average hunter-gatherer does as described in this video. Active people who work out regularly do burn more than inactive people, but only very little, often as low as 100 calories, the equivalent of a single apple. This point isn't about raw calories in versus raw calories out. In a nutshell, are seriously expecting us to believe that a person or a flappy bird reading the book doing zero physical exercise burns only 100 calories less than someone who is active. I'm not buying what they're selling. And the earth is not flat. There wasn't a second shooter on the grassy knoll and we did land on the bloody moon. Also, if this other bluebird working out in the gym isn't burning more calories than the other bird sitting under a duvet, then they're probably doing it wrong. However, I would add that not everyone lifting weights in the gym does so to lose weight and burn calories. In a lot of instances, it's the opposite. They're trying to bulk up and build muscle. To do this, their energy output is very short but intense. Heavy weights for a very short period of time on repeat. Now, this is not an optimum calorie burning exercise. If you went to your PT and said, I'm doing a burn 10,000 calories in 24 hours challenge, they probably wouldn't have you lift weights for any length of time. A long run or a bike ride where you push for as long as you can, for as hard as you can, would probably get you better results. But again, the video doesn't say this. And to make matters worse, if you want to lose fat, your body sabotages you in small and big ways. Your body may subconsciously make you move less when you don't pay attention. Maybe you take the elevator instead of the stairs, you sit more when you meet your friends, or you sleep longer. Your body makes you run slower, take the lift, or sit on the sofa. The video creators are attempting to paint a picture that your body has its own mind. It doesn't. You decide if you want to exercise or not. You decide to walk up the stairs or take the lift. You decide what to put in your mouth and how much of it to put in your mouth. Not your body. Show me scientific evidence that proves you have no control over your effort levels or willpower, and I'll sell you London Bridge. Painting a picture that choosing to take the easy option as being out of your control is again nonsense. Now remember that this is in the context of someone already trying to make it happen. I'm not saying that those that have zero interest in losing weight through exercise or those that can't for health reasons are lazy. Absolutely not. That's not what I'm saying here. Not everyone wants to or can. I get that. But when someone makes a video who has 23 million subscribers saying that exercise is a waste of our time needs a reality check. Nonsense like this does as much damage to our eating and fitness habits as a society as some of the old smoking 
magazine adverts that we now laugh at as being outrageous in their claims and subliminal messaging. Remember, this channel has an average view count on its videos in the several of millions. With great power comes great responsibility. Another thing is that your glands produce hormones you don't need, which triggers your fight or flight response. Fleeing from a lion, attacking that bison, this cortisol was crucial. But if you live a modern, sedentary lifestyle, your body is ready for action that doesn't happen. The part about having an abundance of energy that as humans we no longer need, as we're no longer tackling saber-toothed tigers for food to survive, makes sense. It's something I've said before, but as a reason to keep active, not the opposite. The fight or flight hormone can lead to stress and worry as we can't get rid of it, as we have nothing to fight or flight from. So not having an active release for our fight or flight instincts is an issue. And it also can make us ill mentally and physically. Now more than ever, because physical activity is a choice, it's even more important to do it and to stay mentally healthy as well as physically. If you do actually change your life after sitting around for years and suddenly start working out without eating more, this is a shock to your system. You actually do burn more calories and lose fat. Why even bother to work out? I'll tell you why. You become a better butter burner. Better butter burner. Peter petter, pick to pick of pickle pick. When you start exercising, you get better at it. You become more efficient. And that doesn't mean you burn fewer calories. It means you burn more of them. I wrote almost exactly this in the script for this video, just without the tongue twister. But considering Coach Greg beat me to it, then I'll let him take the credit for it. But again, he's 100% correct. The more you do, the better you get at it. You learn how to become more efficient at exercising to burn more calories if that's your end goal. This is exactly how I started, walking long distances. And then I started shuffling as I lost weight. I shuffled for a few meters, then a few kilometers. And then eventually I could run non-stop for longer and longer. Working out for efficient weight loss is not a myth, especially if it's combined with calorie controlled healthy eating. Your body will adapt, but you feel less sore and more capable as your muscles get stronger. That's how you adapt. I can now run and cycle for a lot longer than I could ever do before, and I'm still burning thousands of calories every time I do it. But this means the obesity epidemic of the modern world is not primarily caused by laziness, but by overeating. Humans evolved to be mad for calories. Most rich modern countries now have an obesity epidemic, mainly because of the abundance of easily accessible fast food options, combined with the almost non-existent need to ever have to move very much at all. And so he summarizes the video by saying, look, the obesity epidemic has more to do with not the fact that you're not moving enough, but more to the fact that you're eating too many calories. Pick your poison. Not doing enough exercise or eating too much food. In general, it's a little bit of both. Coach Greg is again right I've said that a lot in this video the problem is both not moving enough combined with overeating is the problem it's not an Einstein level maths equation that needs reinventing which this video seems to be trying to do this 12 minute video is broken up into three sections over six minutes is offered up to poo poo in exercise as being the devil's work there's a weird three minute section in the middle about having kids as being the reason why we're fat I really didn't get that and then the last three minutes was an an advert disguised as part of the video trying to sell you something. So to conclude, you'll probably not lose nearly as much fat by working out as you hoped. The conclusion of the video was that exercise should be used as part of a balanced lifestyle, but that was almost completely lost by the main takeaway from this video, which is that exercise is a waste of your time for weight loss. And that was the message that came across. That's the message you get from reading the video title and then from watching the video. This is not just my opinion either, it's backed up with viewers feedback in the comments of this video. In conclusion, one really big thing this video misses is the huge mental benefits that exercise and staying fit offers you. Taking the decision to ignore this huge mental well-being benefit that doing any physical activity that increases your heart rate and builds up a sweat has on us is reckless and irresponsible and it appears in a nutshell realise this after the fact as they added this note to the video description. After reading your feedback and looking into it, we have to say that you're right. This video was too simplified and didn't explain things clearly enough. Scripts start out more detailed and then get shortened. And this time we obviously overdid it. This is exactly the kind of stuff we try to avoid, but we went too far and this hurt the message and the science we wanted to explain. What now? Question mark. We are editing the script, adding more information, including more expert feedback, and we'll update the video as soon as possible. I'm passionate about fitness and exercise and very opinionated about it 
as you can probably tell. If I watched this video back in 2019, I might have believed it, and then where would I be now? What In A Nutshell has done with this one video is to take the concept of pushing yourself out of your comfort zone in an attempt to better yourself and drain it of all the joy and achievement you get from overcoming that initial really hard challenge by claiming that you're wasting your time. Take it from me, you're not wasting your time. Good luck in your endeavours and always keep going.